this is Buisan and this is my first ever video and I'm really excited about being able to play this and show you guys some great games. The first one I'm going to show you is Magisite and I have put a lot of hours into this game and I'm pretty much that much closer to being done with getting everything for it. So without further ado let's actually go in and try it out. This is Magisite. It is a side-scrolling platforming RPG. Your goal is to try and kill monsters, level up, get items, and get to the final level where you'll be able to face off against the Scourge. A being that is trying to corrupt this world and ultimately destroy it. So in the end, your job is ultimately to be the hero. The great savior who destroys the Scourge! Sorry, was that anticlimactic? <laughs> it's just kind of the goal. I mean, the gameplay itself is a lot of fun. Collecting as many trees as possible. Building up different items. Combining them. Now, as far as how to do that... There's tutorial. It is a very simple tutorial. It starts out. It explains a good chunk of it. So I'm not going to go into, you know, oh, well, you need to press this key and do this. No, just play the game and you'll get it. As far as the rest of the gameplay goes, it, it is very much Dark Souls-y in that you need to kind of figure out placement, uh, spatial distance, and dealing with the monsters and their different tricks, as it were. Leveling up little by little. And you do that by collecting the little medallions or the little orbs that pop out of the monsters as they die. Right now, they're popping out green orbs, but that's because it's just because there's not a lot of experience. As the item, as the monsters become worth more and you get further in the districts, the color and size of the experience will change, indicating that it is a larger quantity of experience. Once you achieve level 5, 10, or, and 15, you'll get to be able to select a skill. Now, they're divided up into the three classes that are available, the warrior, the mage, and the ranger. There's five skills for each, but you only end up getting three during the course of the game. So, since I'm going with a melee type, let's see what the warrior one is. Oh, and by far the most useful. This skill is the axe throw. Do terrible things. As part of it, to try and gain experience, you have to kind of kill everything. That includes everything from mini-bosses like this guy, to the little harmless piggies that actually have no ability to defend themselves in any way. All of it's worth experience. They also are all worth carry items that you can use. For instance, the piggies drop food, which you do actually need. Your character has a hunger system. Yeah, see the message at the bottom? Your stomach is beginning to grumble. It's because I'm under half. In order to fix that, I have to consume food. And as I do, I leave evidence that I have in tightly coiled piles. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. The goal, though, is to try and get as high a level with the best gear as possible by the time you get to the final area. So that way you can face off against the Scourge. As far as collecting resources and everything like that, if you guys have ever played Terraria, that pretty much sums up this game in a nutshell. Ooh, there's something that I don't get to show very often. That right there is a treasure chest. They aren't very common as far as the worlds go, unless you go to uh, the dungeons, in which case then, surprisingly common. But to offset that, the dungeon has a lot of booby traps, so... Eh, give and take. The treasure chests themselves usually carry useful resources, occasionally weapons, or some kind of gear that you can wear. I have come across... The only armor I've come across in them is shields. 
Well, now that I've got enough materials, I'm going to be making some armor. Normally you should start with the weakest that you can make, such as iron or even bone, which I'll show you how to make some of that. But since I have the materials, I'm going to make ironite, which is a step up as far as the resources go. So we're going to make a bone helmet. By combining two bones together, you make refined bone. Each type of gear requires three, ulti three of those resources to be able to make it. And since I just happen to have the ability to make it, there! My character's decked out. Now, the point of armor actually is not for its armor rating, because the armor itself has none. What it does instead is increases the overall amount of HP that you have, and depending on whether you go the Ranger, the Mage, or the Warrior class, it also increases your stat that gives your damage output. For instance, this particular armor increases my HP by 2 and my attack by 4. The Bone Helm is a, a lower grade armor, so it's 1 and 2, and the Shield, which all classes use. All of them use shields. But it only ever increases your HP. Unless you get one of them special shields that I was telling you about, the ones from the treasure chest, those do increase stats depending on which one you get. Oh yay, another boss! I don't like him. Why another boss? Oh crap. That's Percy the Pirate. He's a little bit of a jerk. Ooh! Yay, I do get to have that. The Zwayhander. A stupidly large sword that just generally does a decent amount of damage. In the game that is can be fused with another material to make it even stronger than it currently is. And it also creates the only hybrid weapon as far as classes go. Now, I know you've seen I know you've seen this a few times. This is a lightning is a light bug. By collecting the right materials, I will be able to actually heart, collect them. Now fusing two of the light bugs creates an elemental stone. That stone can then be fused with the Zwayhander, allowing it to cast magic and do a lot more damage. That indicates that we're going to be dealing with a new playmate, or a new set of playmates. If at any one of the things I notice is it, it does get a little buggy depending on how quickly you move around in the game. If you find that while you're playing your character can't purchase something, try jumping or moving to an area or a location directly next to it, that usually offsets that, and you can then pur purchase the item just fine. It's just a little thing. It really doesn't cause any er problems in the actual gameplay itself. Ah, this is the next area. This, I call the spider nest. Why? Because there's a lot of spiders. And by a lot, I mean an absolutely retarded amount. There's also eggs, which you do not want to play with. As I'm leaving, I'll show you what exactly the eggs are for and what they do. Generally speaking, though, Unless you've got the gear for it, you don't want to even touch them. Did I mention a lot of spiders? There's a lot of spiders. And if it wasn't for this class, 
it would be a lot harder to deal with. And with that, I now have the last of the skills that I can get for this class. Let's see... With this, I will be able to do the Throwing Axe, the Knight's Blade, and Charge. Ooh. And now I get to show you what it looks like when we upgrade the, uh, the Zwayhander. Let's set you over there. This is a fire gem. It's made from two fire bugs. And this is the fire brand. The original attack of the Zwayhander was 35. It shoots up to 95 and has a plus 10 to magic. Making it significantly better than what it was. Now this is a version I wouldn't mind swinging around. Because that is nuts. And I just picked up another Sway Hander. Looks like I'm going to have to show you guys all the different styles. Aw oh, crap. Aw oh, crap. Yay! I pissed off Mommy! Yeah, that's Mommy. That was the reason why I said not to touch the eggs. I have the stats and the gear to be able to take her on. I still don't want to, though. Oh, oh really? That's not cool. The cool thing about the magic-based sword is it will use this spell equivalent to the element that you put it with. It costs 1 MP to cast, and as you can see, I shoot a fireball straight forward, which with this boss makes it dealing with a little easy. There are three of these swords. Fire, Ice, and Lightning. There is an achievement, and I believe there is actually a companion you get for getting all of them. Now, the reason I love this sword is its attack passes through everything. Oh, not mommy again. Oh, well. Looks like we don't get any of those stats. That's another thing. I noticed if you kill the boss too close to the edging, um, well, you can pretty much kiss that experience goodbye. Oh, yay! And now I get to show you this. These are the Scourge. They are little monsters that like to... show up if you stay in a world for more than five minutes. I'll give you a quick look and then I'm peacing out, because they do 10,000 points of damage. My max HP is 42. Um... As it stands, that's a scourge. Yeah, that was, that was, did you see it? I hope you caught that. If you have to, pause it, rewind, stop, go ahead and look at it all you want. Um, it would be the end of the game for me if I stayed. It just wouldn't end well. Goldium, an amazing metal that stands just above Ironite. And with 
this, we're gonna get a Goldium Chestplate. The goal is to try and get to get Diamondite before you end up getting to District 20. District 20 is where the boss is no matter what. Ah, oh, crap. The Queen will only... the... well, what's her name called? Uh, the Broodmother. That's what she's called. Will only show up if you destroy three of the eggs. Ooh. Yeah, no, I know it's going to summon her. I don't care. As you can see, I can shoot through walls. Ah, crap. Here she comes. And as I showed you before, she's not hard to deal with if you can keep her moving in straight lines. Okay, here we go. And there's the Ice Brand. Now, the Ice Brand itself comes with its own... Whoop, its own... Let's try this again. Its own form of magic. Unlike the other one... This one doesn't break the eggs. It does, however, hit relatively hard. There we go. I've been waiting for this. It's the final type of bug. The lightning bug. Oh, and this one in the middle here. As you can see, this one, this purple matches this area, thus this leads to another brood mother. This is called the Velt. It is an area with a, that's worth a lot of money, but is better for ranged characters as opposed to a melee. This is a dungeon area. I'm going to show you what the dungeons look like and why melees are very, very disadvantaged in those areas. And I really just wanted to get out of uh, dealing with the spiders. This is the dungeon. And as you can see, they hold no qualms beating you up as much as possible. Spike balls, flaming shins, skellies wielding obsidian swords. Yeah, they kind of put the works in this one. Not to mention archers who can shoot through walls and barriers. Ah! There's one of the shields I was telling you about. It's called Ravenroth's Scale. Ah, I don't need to harvest that anymore. I've already gotten past it as far as the resources go. Once I'm out of here, I'll touch on this a little more.
Ooh, and I need that. Okay. No. There we go. Ah! Another boss! Ah, oh, all that work. That's what I get for not paying attention to what I'm doing. Oh! Here's the thing, though. Uh, it's not that big a deal. If you die, you die. The entire point is actually to get to this page. Because... Once you have achieved as much as you can, did as much as you can, got through as far as you can, you end up getting these treasure chests. But if, for instance, you had unlocked a new class, unlocked a variant of that class, unlocked a hat, a companion, or anything like that, it would have shown up in those chests. So your goal is to try and get as far as you can, do as much as you can, and then get to these chests. So don't be discouraged if you die a lot. And I mean a lot. I'll actually show you, as it stands right now, I have died 92 times. That's 92 characters! Dead! Gone! My high score is 10,000. Uh, I've killed almost 8,000 enemies. I've gotten a lot of gold over the course and a lot of experience. Um, on the main menu you can actually see your stats and kind of see where you went and how you got everything. Um, it goes down to everything from how much food you've eaten to how many bosses you defeated. So it does show a, quite a bit as far as helpful information. Um, if at any time you get sick of this and you're like, alright, I'm going to start over, you can delete the data and start from ground zero. I'm not going to do that because there was so much effort put into collecting this. I mean, each race themselves has a different requirement. Personally, this one's my favorite right here. In order to get him, I have to beat Axelark the Third, the Spirit Knight boss. He's a side boss, which you need to purchase an item in the last three levels called a Spirit Gem. Breaking the item in any level other than town summons Axelark. You then have to beat him. Doing so grants you the Spirit class, which, as you can see, has a high amount of health and a really high boost to attack especially considering this is your base class you get one health that's where you start that's the bread and butter at the beginning of the game so another thing is each class has three variants it's just a little bit of a look it has no actual effect on the gameplay whatsoever but it still makes it that much more worth getting and you have to unlock each variant by playing the game. As you play, there are gear that you can collect, hats as they're called, hats and masks. Um, each one has its own requirement. As you can see, I've got most of them. Uh, this one's probably never going to be in my collection. It cuts the amount of damage you take in half, and in order to obtain it, you can't take any damage during one playthrough. None. Yeah, that's a little tough. Um, but each hat has its own bonus, and it's worth looking into and getting, because they do change the gameplay dramatically. Your companions also have their own little ways of getting in. Like, the easiest one to get is the regen fairy. It slowly heals its owner every time you exit a district, or enter a district, you get one health. Which, in order to get that, you have to get to District 15 in a single playthrough. Which, District 15 is pretty far in, but it's not the most complicated, as far as it goes. So it is a wonderful game. It's available on Steam. I'm going to leave a link in the description. It does occasionally go up for sale, so if you want to wait till then, go ahead. It makes the value of the game that much better. It is a good game worth looking into, though, especially because there is the multiplayer option, which allows you to play up to four players in a single playthrough. And every player that you add does increase the loot by one additional item. So there is enough to share and go around. 
Well, this is Ma has been Magisite, and I am Buisan, and thank you very much, my fellow gamers, for taking a look. I look forward to seeing you guys again in whatever I make next. Buisan out.